Hey guys, welcome back to another Tool Tuesday. What I have in front of you here is a tailstock that is used for dividing heads and index spacers and other machine accessories on tool and cutter grinders and things like that. Now, I don't know who the exact manufacturer of this tailstock is. I want to take an educated guess and say it might have been made by Carroll, such as the uh, Carroll Dividing Head Company but I don't know that to be fact, so I'm really not sure who actually built this tailstock here. But what I can tell you is that I got this from my friend Lance. He gave me this, I was at his shop a couple years ago, I was helping him move some stuff around, and this was an extra one that he had in his uh, collection there, and asked him uh, would he be interested in uh, selling this to me, which he ended up just giving it to me, so thank you Lance for that. And it's been sitting on my shelf patiently waiting for me to get it cleaned up and modify it because I plan on using this with my six inch vertex simple spacer over on the KBC mill. So just to back up a, a minute here, what I this was pretty rusty. So I soaked it in my big evaporust tank for a full day and pulled it out and cleaned it up. So I just took the thing apart, I went over there to the smart washer and brushed it, and it actually brushed all of the old paint. The paint got soft and loose and it just brushed it all off of there. And then I took it apart and just cleaned up a few of the things like the bolt, the handle right here, and I took my flat stones. I took this piece out right here. This is a really nice quality uh, build. And so that was surface ground on both sides. It was ground on the inside of the housing there. So it's got a super, close fit inside there. And this is made to be adjustable. As you can see, you can raise this up and there's a couple little pads up inside here, one on each side that, that, that this body sits on. It's ground on the bottom there as well so that you can, you can set it down and you can adjust the height for, I'm assuming, other, other indexing spacers or other dividing heads that this might have uh, went to, all right? So we got her cleaned up and it works good. The spindle, has a nice snug fit through there. This bolt right here actually uh, tightens up the spindle nose here, the center, and these two bolts right here just simply tighten up the whole fixture like that whenever you're ready to uh, tighten it up. So once I get this thing set and these are tight, there's no reason to take to loosen these up. They'll just stay that way. But you can take and just run this in and out. So whenever you're using this with a dividing head or an indexing spacer and you need to rotate your part, you just simply loosen this, back this off just a touch, and then you can freely spin your part, snug it back up, tighten this bolt right there. That's just how it's used. So I need to modify it in order to uh, make use of it with my Vertex indexing spacer. And what we need to do, I need to mill about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of this right here so that we can match the height, okay? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll go over there to the mill and we'll line them up together. And you can see what I'm talking about. The, the center line of the point here is, uh, this one's about an eighth inch high. So my plan is to actually set this guy up and we're, we're gonna do some measurements on the spacer to see what the center line is from the bottom to the center point there, get that measurement. And then we want to measure this one as well and see what it is. And then we'll put it in the mill, get it fixtured up and just simply mill the bottom of that to match the height. Now you can, you can shim it right there if you need to. So if we overshoot our measurement, maybe we make it a little bit low, we can simply cut some shim and put it in there and stack it up and get it, get it centered up that way. So we'll, we'll go over to the mill and uh, I'll show you how this is gonna be used. We've got the base of our spacer index. We're gonna use this surface here to indicate off of to the center of the chuck. I'll show you. We do have the, the base of it trammed in nicely. I'm just gonna bridge this gap right there. All right, nice and straight on the base of that spacer. We have a plug gauge here mounted in the chuck. This is a nice precision ground gauge that we can use to uh, sweep the OD of it to find the center of that chuck. So we've got our Blake coaxial indicator set up. We'll bring it down. I've already got it centered up just to speed this up so you, so you can see as we do our sweep, that needle's moving maybe a half a thou out. So that's gonna be our center 
of the chuck right there. And we'll zero out our DRO, which I'm gonna do right there. Zero, zero. Now that we've got the center of the chuck swept and we have our zero location, we're gonna put this edge finder in there and we'll be able to come over and down and touch off this edge of the, the, the base of it there. And we'll have to subtract 100 thousandths because this is 200 thousandths diameter. But once we do that, that should give us our exact center line. All right, now that we found the, the edge of here and we have our DRO, it was set to zero. It's given us a reading of 5.227 minus 100 thou. So that's 5.127 is what the height is from the base to the center of the chuck. I'm gonna call that at five and one eighth is probably what they were making at, what they were shooting for. So I've already got it written down right here. We've got our center line written at 5.127 according to our readings on the DRO and what we've indicated right there. So that is the height that we need to make our tailstock right here. We need to be the same height from here to the center of our center. We're doing a quick visual inspection using my cylindrical square and our machinist square there, the 12 inch machinist square and seeing if we can tell if the machinist square is still square. I've never checked it before except for up against another machine square. And so we're trying to do the light test right there where you can see the, the light there at the door to see if we see any light coming through there. It's looking pretty good. I think we still have a good machine square. Good enough for the shop work that we use it for anyway. So I'm using this angle plate here that's gonna hold the base of our tailstock for our measuring and I need to get it indicated square. So this is how I usually square things up. And this is usually good enough for most of the work that you're doing, but we're gonna indicate it. So I thought this would be kind of fun to show you. We'll see how close I can get it by using the machinist square. I'm just trying to hold everything flat. And then you wanna bring this in to that edge. And we'll snug it up so it doesn't move. Now let's run the indicator across there and see how close I got it by just using a machine square. All right, there's zero. I'll move you so you can get a better view of that. Just doing this now so you see I'm not trying to play any uh, editing trickery on you. Should be within a couple thou, I hope. And it looks like that is negative one. I think it's got a little bit of a dip in it. That is positive one right there. So I don't think it's flat. We'll come back to this corner and that is zero. So actually from end to end there, we're, we're within one thousandths. It's definitely not flat. So you got about a thousandths bow in the center of it. All right, and then uh, that really, that looks like a half a thou. So I'm not even going to mess with it. I, th I don't think it's worth trying to bump that half a thousandth around between these two points. I think that's going to be fine for our measuring needs for this guy right here. Go ahead and get it tightened up there. All right, we're about a half a thou negative. You can see our hump in the middle there. And then back to zero there. We have got a Starrett 196 indicator set up as a transfer measurement there with our indicator attachment so that we can come on this inside area that's been machined. This is where the body of the quill gets pinched. So we wanna make sure that this is vertical, that we're not tilted one way or the other. And I'm just gonna use the quill on the mill here to sweep this up and down. We'll get the top there set to a zero and then we'll sweep it down. All right, it's a little bit high on the bottom there. Let me see if I can, I just have this bottom bolt there holding this on there. Once we get it indicated, I'm gonna put a couple C-clamps on there to support the top. So I'm gonna see if we can just ever so slightly against the uh, reading there. Now I'll just keep doing this. Still got a little ways to go. Put 
Still about one thou. So we'll bump it a couple more. All right, that's on two thou. Three thou, so we still got about one more thou to go. Let's move it a couple more. All right, that's on zero. There we go. Jumping around about a half a thou, but I would call that, that should be pretty straight and in line right there. I'm gonna go ahead and snug this, this bottom clamp a little bit further. All right, that's looking good right there. We got our quill body clamped back in there with our bolts. We've got this uh, tightened down against the center. We're just lined up there with the center point. Now we'll put our coaxial back in the spindle here and go ahead and sweep in the, uh, the center here of the center. Okay, we've got the center here indicated. We'll move that so you can see the needle changing a little bit there. It wiggles around a few tenths, but otherwise we're in the center of the center there. So we've got our DRO set to zero zero so now we can go from this point right here and indicate the uh the back edge there and then that'll give us our center height got our edge finder in there let's find the bottom all right so this is the number we want negative 5.3456 so Subtract 100 thousandths from that, that's going to give you 5.245. So I'm assuming that that was a nominal size of five and one quarter being the center that's from here to here. So when I did my first measurement, just using a, a scale, I was saying that they were about an eighth, inch, eighth of an inch off, and that's exactly what they are, about an eighth of an inch there. So I'm going to write this measurement down so that we have it. And then we can move on to setting this guy up so that we can machine the bottom of that. We're going to uh, clamp this in the vise right there so that we can do a simple uh, mill operation on the, the back side of our body there. I have pulled the quill body out some and we've got it tightened up really good because this is what we're going to be clamping on in our mill vise to be able to hold it in order to mill the bottom of it there. Now that we've got it clamped here in the vise, these bolts are nice and tight so they shouldn't have any risk of this shifting or moving. We use our stair at 196 again to sweep across the face here. So I set it down in there on a parallel. And even though it's setting on that where it's at, we were pretty darn close, three thousandths. All right, so there's our two measurements right there, and that's the difference of what we need to take off that. 118 thousandths and six tenths, all right? So one way that we can check this as we cut it is we've got the uh, Sterrett digital height gauge here, and we can bring this guy down. Let's just go ahead and uh, look at it and see where we're at. That says 1.590. Come over here and let's look at this side right here. 589, so it's showing about a thousandths difference right there. So what we'll do is just go ahead and set a zero. Let's come down and we just touch it. And then we're going to zero it right there. Now, as we take cuts, we can come in here with our height gauge and inspect it and see what the difference is. Now we've got a zero set with our digital height gauge.
That first pass did a really nice job. I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna see uh, what we got on the digital height gauge there. I dialed in 52. I do not have a three axis DRO on this, by the way. So we just I always have to rely on that right there. I just wanna see if we're dialing in what we actually took. 52, all right. We'll come over here and move that, move to that side and cut it too. That was our finished cut. Let's go ahead and inspect it with our height gauge and see where we landed for our cut. You guys can see that okay, I think. 119. Now this reads in half a thousand, uh, half a thousand increments there. So we were looking for 118 and six tenths and it's showing that we got 119 so we i think we are we are good to go for doing it on a milling machine like this that's about as good as you're asking for right there that says 119 and a half i could have pushed a little bit a little bit harder down that time i don't have it locked 119 and a half so maybe we're within a thousandths of my target, 119. So it's showing half a thousandths between the two right there, but I'm happy where that landed right there. And that should be good to go. And if we have to, if we need to, we can absolutely shim this to, to bring it up just a, just a tad. So I do need to come through here and cut the key again. That's gonna be a 5 8 uh, key through there. I've also got to uh, make a couple keys for this a couple for the spacer as well. I'm just gonna get that stuff done and I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to bolt this stuff down.
Okay, I've got the keys machined and bolted to the bottom of both the tailstock and the indexing spacer there. The, the ones on the index spacer look just like that, 5 8 keys. So this will allow it to drop down into the slot there. And we can adjust this thing where we need to tighten it down. So what we're going to be using to check the alignment here is this guy right here. This is a tailstock alignment bar, but it's a, it'd be a great tool to use here as well, made by Edge Technology. So it's ground between centers. Both of these journals are the same size. So we can, this is a 60 degree ground center that I'm using that's chucked up into the uh, spacer here. All right, so we can just bring this guy up. Just like that, we'll go ahead and tighten down our T-bolts here. And then you can adjust the uh, tailstock pressure with this guy right there, loosen it up when you want to spin it. And then when you're ready to do the machine work, you just kind of snug it up a little bit and tighten the, the bolt for the split there. It just snugs up the center. All right, so there we go. We'll set up a, we'll use the stair at 196 back plunge indicator. And what we'll do is sweep across the top of these two journals to see where we're at at elevation change, you know, if we're aligned. And then we can also check the side of it as well to see if everything's aligned this way as well. All right, stare at 196 back plunge. All right, what I wanna do is come in here on this journal. Let's set a zero. I'm gonna come down and see if we can get it close to that zero there. And I'm gonna sweep it back and forth like this on, on the Y axis to get the top dead center position. That's looking good. Looks like it's lining up on the zero. So what I'll do is just back off and then we'll uh, wrap it down here to the other journal. All right, we'll come sweep across this one. That is super close. It was, I would say that's within a half a thousandths of being on the same right there. So that is awesome. So our elevation alignment looks pretty well spot on as far as our height of both of the uh, center points matching up. All right, so very cool. Really happy with that. So let's, we'll re We'll rearrange the indicators so that we can sweep the front side of there to see what our side to side alignment looking like. All right, do the same thing except for the side here. All right, that's looking pretty good. Maybe a line off. Top dead center is on zero. So let's go ahead and move it down here to the other side. All right, so looks like we're showing about three, three and a half thousandths difference right there. And that's because of the clearance in the keys. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can tweak that. I'll loosen these up just slightly. The old taparoo. All right. Zero. Let's go back. Check the other side again, the other end. Look at that. Zero. About a half a line over. 
So that is looking good. When we moved it from uh, this right side, we were at zero. So I don't know, maybe about a half a thou or so off of uh, center. So that's looking pretty good. That right there is uh, nice and aligned and I'm really happy with the results on how this turned out. Our modified tailstock, repurposed tailstock, is now ready to put to work here. So we can take work pieces like the spindle here, and you can chuck one side and the indexing spacer here, and now we can support the other end using our tailstock, just like this. Snug up the center. And now we are, we are ready to go. That looks good. Real happy with that right there. So you come in here to do your machining, your hole drilling, whatever you got to do. And then we'll just go ahead and loosen this clamp up for our video here. And so when you're ready to index it, you can just kind of ease off on the tension of the center. We come down here to our spacer and we index it whatever uh, angle that we want. Say we want to go to 15, there's 15 degrees, or maybe you want 30 degrees. This will index and drop in every 15 degrees there. So that's how that works. And we can come in here to this and we can do our key, we can do our drilling and tapping, and then our drilling on this flange right here, all in one operation and get that done. So. That's going to be uh, super convenient to have set up now with our Vertex indexing spacer. And I'm real happy with the results.